All right, my friends, how are you today? Hopefully everybody's enjoying that full moon energy as much as possible. There's a lot going on, I know. So today, Monday, the 29th of March, 2021, we still have the moon moving through into the later degrees of Libra. Early in the morning, we still have this grand air trine connecting the moon and Libra, moon over here in Libra, to Saturn and Aquarius, as well as the south node and Mars down in Gemini. And this grand air trine early in the morning is creating a grand kite. And the sextile happening between Saturn and the south node in Sagittarius and uh, the moon in Libra and the south node in Sagittarius. Okay, this is letting go. Letting go of that which no longer serves. Okay, that can be emotions, that can be ideas, that can be people. This full moon energy is extremely powerful this weekend and leading into this week. Couples who aren't in their strongest form are going to find their independence and split up. Individuals that are seeking relationship, that are feeling themselves in their strongest, are seeking partnerships. So people are coming together as well as people are falling apart. This is a necessary step in the evolution of our individual lives here on this planet. We learn from each other. We are each other's reflections. Right? Let me show you this chart here. So this is our grand air trine continuing. Okay, Moon and Libra, balance. This is the reflection. Mars and the North Node working together, seeking truth, making our own minds up. Saturn in Aquarius. This is an interesting aspect, Saturn in Aquarius right now. We'll talk about that in a second here. And the sextile you see between Saturn and the South Node and the Moon in the South Node. So this is our kite. We're moving in this direction. We're moving in the direction of releasing and letting go. Okay, the base of our kite is finding knowledge, finding and seeking our truth, which plays a big part into this day as the day moves on because Mercury will be conjunct Neptune uh, later in the evening, about 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay, so part of Saturn in Aquarius is the idea of fitting in fitting into a group, looking a certain way. Saturn rules the bones, Aquarius the nervous system, so Saturn bones, teeth, get your grill checked, right? Um, and, and our identity, okay, this is a huge part, our identity. And in this Libra full moon, we have the reflection of other people showing us who we are. Other people are showing us our shadow as well on the opposite side of that coin, right? There's always two sides of the coin. Uh, people can be projecting their shadow onto you, projecting their shadow onto us. There's this interesting story that came to mind while meditating about today's planetary alignment. And I, I know this extremely beautiful woman, inside and out. Cover of swimsuit magazine, absolutely stunningly gorgeous human being, uh, beautiful heart. This individual did not see her own beauty. She looked for her beauty in confirmation from others. At one point in her journey, she was so upset with the way that she looked, but she was perfect, <laughs> absolutely stunningly gorgeous, perfect as we are all perfect, and you're perfectly you, beautiful. And at one point in this woman's journey, she decided to take all the mirrors down around her place because she didn't like the reflection that was being shown back to her. She couldn't see the beauty in herself, so the reflection that she was seeing wasn't beautiful. It wasn't enough. And wanting to change aspects of herself, lips, eyes, bust, right? And it was that constant confirmation of looking to seek somebody else's approval of, of uh, beauty. And with Saturn here in Aquarius, we can all be feeling these certain, that certain energy of, I need to look this certain way to see beauty. I need to look like this person. I need to look how the world sees, right? We judge beauty by symmetry. 
right? So, so we look for these, these things that say, I want to be more like this. I wish my nose wasn't as big, or I wish mine hadn't been broken three times in my life. And whatever, you know, it's, but this is like, this is part of us being perfectly ourselves and perfectly beautiful. There was, I think I've talked about this on the channel before, there was a study done and asking, asking adults if you could change something about yourself, what would it be? And adults would say, yes, my lips or my eyes or, or my, a tummy tuck or larger pecs or, or whatever it may be. It was always a physical attribute of self to, to reconfirm on how society, the group, collective, Aquarian energy, sees what beauty is. And when they were asking the same question to children, it was like, oh, I wish I had wings. I wish I had a tail like a dragon. You know, it was, it was always something animated. It, they didn't see the flaw. Flaw, I use that loosely, but they, they didn't see those things in themselves because they hadn't, they hadn't reached that age limit where, where the, the, the mirror was turned back on them. And they said, well, why don't I get the attention from this person that I seek love from? Or why don't I get the recognition of this? And now I have to work harder in some other area or some other aspect of my life. You know, and this is part of us letting this stuff go and understanding that we are perfect, that you are perfectly you. This is what part of the energy is saying. We are perfect and ever expanding. And some people love to challenge when I say that. Oh, we're not perfect. We're, we're always things wrong with us. It's like, well, we're always growing. We're always expanding. We're always learning. But we are. We handled the situation exactly how we needed to handle it. We, we look exactly how we're supposed to look. We talk how we're supposed to talk. And yet we look at other people. Other people show us our reflection. And they help us. They help us to learn, to expand, to grow. Something I talked about last week uh, of, you know, the different elements of the, of the chart, the different elements of the zodiac. You know, there's an observer that needs to sit back and watch the person on the dance floor being free. That shows them their expression of freedom. There's somebody else who's very emotional uh, and, and has a hard time climbing the rope because they see the obstacle instead of going through the motions. And then they look at the earth sign. And they see that it's like we don't have time for emotion. We have to climb the rope. We have to climb the mountain. So each you know, aspect of the zodiac is creating balance. That's also what this full moon is about, is, is creating balance. And again, seeing others and allowing us to see our reflection. And coming back to that, that mirror, you know, it, the mirror is important. Seeing our reflection through others is important. The, the, the goal is to not be lost in the mirror, lost in our gaze of looking back at ourselves and nitpicking and seeing things that we will want to change. The moon isn't in Virgo right now, right? That can be a very Virgo tendency. So we have a lot of Virgo in our charts. Sometimes we can be nitpicky and, 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 and see all the, you know, the cracks in the cement that, you know, we, we want to change. So the goal is not to be lost in the mirror in this reflection right now, um, picking things apart as well as it's not, um, lost in the mirror in the sense of vanity when we have all of this Aries, uh, Sun and Venus connecting with Chiron, right? It's kind of healing that sense of the ego of, of, of vanity. Oh, look how beautiful I am. Look how, oh, aren't you, aren't you glad I'm your friend? You know, that, that kind of energy. So this is, this is about balancing all of these motions and energies out. And, and the, the fulcrum point, right? The crux of this is letting go in Sagittarius. It's letting go, and that has to deal with up here in the mind. Letting go of a certain thing. And remembering, you know, part of yesterday's uh, cosmic story is, is the tree perfectly being and understanding that this is an apple tree. And it doesn't want or desire to be an orange tree or a banana tree or a walnut tree or a lilac tree or a magnolia tree. But it's, it's being perfectly balanced and perfectly who you are. And not having to lean. This is something we talked about last month when the moon was in, in Libra. Not having to lean because once the tree leans, it topples over. We have to be firmly planted and firmly rooted and our expansion up to the sun, right? So now part of this energy as well today, as this kite formation moves on, we're going to have the moon squaring off 
with Pluto. So at first, what starts off in this trine and sextile, now the moon turns into the septile. So as the day moves on, this energy becomes a little bit easier to deal with, a little bit easier to roll off, okay? This is like cooking something, you know, a, a slow cook. Patience, right? Libra is all about patience of the mind. Capricorn is about patience in the physical world. So we have our emotional moon squaring off with Pluto. Both of these things require patience. If I look in the mirror and I say, hey, I need to exercise more, what we, what we want to do is continue that daily practice. What we don't want to do is plant the seed, the idea, the air energy, planting the seed, I'm going to exercise. I'm going to start this new daily regimen. I'm going to start this new diet, this new um, whatever. I'm going to let go of smoking or let go of drinking or let go of, of a habit. Okay, Mercury is going to conjunct Neptune today. Letting go of a habit, letting, letting go of something that no longer serves us to, to seek our better selves. So we don't want to plant a seed and then say, oh, it's not bearing any fruit. I'm done. I'm walking away from this. I'm going back. It takes time and nurturing. When we, when we first set down the bottle, when we first set down the pack of smokes, or we first set down sweets, or whatever it may be, it takes time to cultivate that. It might, certain days are going to be easier than other days. Some days are going to be more challenging and difficult to go back to our old patterns, to our old habits. And this energy squaring off right now is saying, you know, look at the future. And that's another beautiful part of this. As, as the moon starts to square off to Pluto, the moon is also creating a trine over here to Jupiter. Very powerful because Jupiter is about expansion, saying we have a vision of ourselves for the future. So I'm going to make these changes in my life because I choose to, not because I need to fit into the world. I'm going to stick through these decisions. I'm going to be patient in my mind. I'm going to be patient in the expansion, the transformation of my daily life. I'm not going to plant a seed and expect it to bear fruit tomorrow. I know that this tree takes time to grow. And then lastly, we have the moon, uh, uh, Mercury, here we go, 11 p.m., Conjunct Neptune. Now, Mercury is, is a powerful placement in the, sign of, in the sign of Pisces because it deals with the, the knowledge that's up here. That's, you know, when, when somebody's about to say something and it's on the tip of their tongue and they can't remember it and it's almost as if you can grab it out of the air, right? Uh, there's this, this energy in the ether. There's, there's this you know, knowledge, spirit, angel means it's, it, it doesn't have to do with a, an unseen thing. Angel means messenger, angel, messenger of God, L means of God, angel, messenger. Now that can be in spirit form or that can be in physical form, but it's truly the same thing. It wasn't until the English language where they changed that and made it two separate things, messenger and angel, but they, they both mean the exact same thing. Angel is just a messenger of God. We are all messengers of God. We're all that beautiful reflection of ourselves. So in, in one aspect of Mercury and Neptune, we're, we're, we're connecting with the unseen messenger. We're connecting with that source energy. We're connecting from insight, uh, uh, spirit, okay, which is, which is a powerful thing to do. When we quiet our minds and listen, we'll receive answers. The flip side of the coin on this one is there's a lot of answers in the world. Everybody has their point of view. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody has something that they want to tell you to share you to make you a better person. <laughs> ah, you know, see how this is all connecting now. Um, and part of that is through news, through media. That is a part of Neptune and Pisces, deals with news and media. And when we look at the commercials, they, you know, they want to sell you a product because they want, not they don't want you to be better, they want your money. <laughs> so Mercury, which is the ruling, si uh, ruling planet associated with Gemini and Virgo, 
we have Mars and the North Node down there in the sign of Gemini, which is saying I need to seek my own truth. I'm not buying your product. I'm not buying your knowledge just because you're selling it. You know, just because somebody's offering a donut doesn't mean we have to take it. Just because somebody's offering us something, could be anything, doesn't mean we have to take it. And sometimes the persuasion of just offering leads us to say, oh, if I don't take this thing, then I'm being a disservice to this person. You know, they're offering something to me. And, and this is highlighting that energy as Mercury can be lost in the grandness of Neptune, which is the black hole kind of energy in astrology. So we don't want to be lost. We don't want our own insight to be lost. We don't want our own truth to be lost in what somebody else is pitching and what somebody else is selling. What's important is to seek knowledge. If somebody presents an idea that differs from our own, it's something that I ask people often, and especially when I talk about the astrotheology. We're talking about thousands of years of this is how it is, and if you don't accept this way of living, there is a consequence in the afterlife. And here comes this guy saying, this is the planets. There's a reason why these books are telling us not to look into astrology, and that's for control. That's to, to keep this part in time of life what it is, honoring the age of Pisces. Well, we're no longer there. So I ask people all the time to, to, to look into this knowledge that might be different from what they think. And I don't want people to just take my word for it. The truth is I want you to dive deep. I want you to look in those, you know, look in that stuff yourself. So this isn't about me and just preaching that message, but this is about anything. You know, if somebody is offering something, knowledge or whatever it is, do I really need this? And if so, what benefits is this going to create for me? And we really are harnessing this energy as the moon is going to be in, in, in the end of Libra throughout the day. You know, it's hitting that anerotic degree, that 29th degree, just as Mercury and Neptune meet up, which is an extremely powerful degree of our own, uh, our own decision making. Remember that the, the Libra energy is the cardinal, the strongest of the air signs. It brings in that change. It brings in that, that, that connective tissue that changes, you know, uh, uh, from, from the end of summer to the beginning of, beginning of autumn here in the Northern Hemisphere, from the end of winter into the beginning of spring in the Southern Hemisphere. This is a very, very strong energy. So we have to take a look at this and, and remember our strength and where we're coming from. That's why this beauty of having the sun and, and uh, Venus and Chiron still in Aries is like remembering our strength, remembering our fire. And Mars in the North Node down in Gemini is, I am, I am this strength, I am this fire, and I can use my own strength and ability to seek that knowledge. And if somebody's offering me knowledge that might be different from my own, to go and investigate we're all the investigators. We're all the detectives right now, as long as the, the North Node is in Gemini and the South Node is in Sagittarius, because we're letting go of old stuff. We're letting go of what no longer serves us. As easy as that may come or as difficult as that may come, it's all for the greater good, for the greater expansion of ourselves, for the greater expansion of humanity. Things are changing. <laughs> All right, my friends. Ooh, hope you're enjoying this energy. I love you. I wish you enough, and we'll see you tomorrow.